those of you who saw my Open Studios video, um, this was one of the last paintings shown. It was a view of Lincoln Cathedral from Castle Hill, done in pen and watercolour. As a result of this work, I was asked to do a short demonstration on how I had reproduced some of the buildings within the painting. I did this by producing a series of small drawings divided in half, showing a step-by-step -step approach to the technique that I'd used in order to represent the buildings that can be seen within the painting. In the first illustration, you will see that on the left, I've done a basic pencil drawing. Uh, once I'm happy with this, I then move to the right and start inking in the detail. For this, I've used a, a rotary pen with the gray ink. Uh, I've put in the detail on the tiles on the roof and the window and the brickwork. The brickwork, as you will see, is Flemish Bond. This is very important. The um, type of brickwork used is um, important in terms of the age of the building. This is a, a Victorian building and um, so it's quite important to get the right kind of detailing. Um, we will then move on to the second illustration, um, which will then start uh, applying colour. In the second illustration, you will see that I've applied a thin version of uh, Payne's Grey to the roof tiles and to the guttering. And on the brickwork, I've applied a thin coat of yellow ochre. I've moved to the right and then I've randomly started to fill in the roof tiles with a stronger version of Payne's Grey and the brickwork I've used Burnt Sienna to randomly pick out some of the brickwork. In the third illustration on the left, I have um, increased the colouring in the tiles uh, by adding a bit of sepia to the Payne's Grey and to the guttering. And on the brickwork, I've added some burnt umber to the um, brickwork, filling in more of the bricks. I've also added a, a thin coat of yellow ochre to the curtain and a pale blue wash to the inside of the room. On the right, I've uh, um, carried on with the roof tiles, adding more colour with a variation of the Payne's grey and the sepia. And on the brickwork, I've added uh, cadmium red. I've also increased the colouring uh, on the curtain. In the fourth illustration, I've uh, filled in the remaining uh, areas of brickwork that have not been painted using a thin cadmium red and some yellow ochre. I've also added some shadow underneath the guttering and I've intensified the colour of the guttering. I've also added a little bit of shadow to the curtain and inside the, the room. On the right hand side, I've done a wash over all of the brickwork using a very thin cadmium red and I've intensified the shadow on the curtain and uh, a little bit more colour to the actual roof tiles. In the fifth illustration you can see that I've uh, increased the shading on the guttering and divided the guttering from the underneath the tiles. Uh, I've also increased the shading on the curtain and inside the room. And I've also added some shadow to uh, certain parts of the window around the framework and uh, on the right hand side I've again increased the shading on the curtain and inside the room, uh, making it more, giving it more depth and also increased the shading around the side of the window. You'll also notice that I've uh, increased the shading underneath the window glazing bars to give it more depth and also to create a bit of shape in the curtains. And this is the final part of this uh, section of the illustration. In the second part of the demonstration, uh, this is a slightly older building and I've taken a slightly different approach to this. Uh, you will see that uh, I've started with a pencil drawing, putting quite a lot of detail into the pan tiles on the roof and uh, guttering in the window, uh, but left the brickwork plain. Uh, I've then moved on to the right hand side, inked in the uh, pan tiles on the window as previously. The second illustration on the left, You'll see that I've done a general wash of uh, burnt sienna and cadmium red over the pan tiles and over where the brick will be and some uh, uh, Payne's grey in the guttering. I've also added a little bit of uh, pale blue into the window and some yellow ochre to the stonework uh, to the top and the bottom of the window. On the right hand side I've increased the uh, 
detailing in the roof by adding a little bit more of the burnt umber and uh, burnt sienna, uh, making it a bit stronger. And uh, I've also increased a little bit of detailing actually in the curtain itself, showing a little bit of patterning. I've also added um, some shadow to the window and I've increased the shading uh, washes on the uh, brickwork uh, using the same colour as I did before, burnt umber and burnt sienna. In this third illustration on the left, you'll see that I've actually <coughs> tinted some of the pantiles with uh, various uh, strengths of, uh, uh, of sepia, uh, to give it a bit more form, and then I've washed over it with uh, a thin wash of cadmium red and burnt sienna. Uh, I've also increased the shading on the guttering by adding some more neutral tint along the bottom, making it stronger, giving a bit more form, and also increased the shading along the bottom underneath the guttering. Uh, in conjunction with this, I've also added a little bit more shading to the actual window, giving it a bit more form and giving a little bit more detail to the actual curtain. On the right hand side, I've increased the uh, colouring on the pantiles, and making it a bit stronger. Uh, I've also increased a little bit more colour on the actual stonework, uh, top and bottom of the window, by adding a little bit more uh, yellow ochre, raw sienna and burnt umber. Uh, I've also increased the shading a little bit more, giving a little bit more shape to the curtains and also increasing the detailing uh, and on the brickwork I've outlined the bricks with um, titanium white and this has picked up some of the colour from underneath and this is creating the mortar uh, lines. I've also created a bit of shading on the brickwork uh, to the left and underneath uh, by adding a little bit more uh, sepia over the top of the original colour uh, giving it a little bit more form a little bit more age. In the third part of the demonstration, you will see that this is a, an older building. It's a Norman architecture, represents part of the Exchequer Gate, which is in front of the cathedral. Uh, and as before, I started with a pencil drawing, uh, keeping the um, stonework fairly free, but adding a little bit more detail to the actual window itself. I then moved to the right and inked all of this in using my rotring and a grey ink, uh, trying to keep the stonework fairly random. Uh, but adding detail to the window in terms of the leaded, leaded glass. Uh, I then added a wash to the whole of the painting um, using yellow ochre. In this third illustration, it's slightly different because we have stages three, four and five combined together. On the left, you will see that uh, I've increased the colouring on the stonework, adding a little bit of uh, burnt umber and burnt sienna to the uh, raw sienna. I've also increased the shading underneath the stonework above the window. Within the window itself, I've increased the shading using a uh, neutral tint uh, to give it a little bit more form, a little bit more shape. And I've also added some Payne's Grey to the actual leaded glass. Uh, on the right, you'll see that I've increased the shading uh, underneath the stonework uh, above the window. I've also increased the shading within inside the window and uh, within the form of the window. I've also added a slight more a variety of uh, colour to the actual uh, glazed glass, uh, to the lily glass, and uh, I've increased some of the uh, colour within the stonework. As we come to the bottom of the right hand side, you will see that the stonework starts to get a bit stronger. I've added a kind of broken effect using uh, sepia, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and raw sienna, and I've also added some shading to the stone uh, using sepia to give a bit more form. And this is the final part of the, uh, the demonstration.